guys welcome back to Andy Speed Shop this one's a little different it's something I've not worked on before and uh, it'll be fun <clears throat> this is a 1985 Honda Spree um, so a good friend of mine uh, that, that I used to work with he contacted me about finding him something like this. He has come across some medical difficulties and he's not real comfortable, I don't think, driving his full-size Chevy truck anymore. And he feels kind of um, stuck at home, you know? Everyone else runs off to work and uh, he's at home. So, uh, we got this Honda Spree for him to give him a little bit of more freedom. You know, he can go down the road, uh, go to the store, just get out of the house. Plus, this thing's going to be super fun. Um, but he contacted me because, you know, he knows what I like to do. And uh, he was like, hey, if you ever come across a good deal on a scooter, you know, let me know about it. And uh, and I can give you some money to, to go get it for me, fix it up, whatever, whatever it needs. So what he doesn't know is that we did just that, but we're we're not gonna charge him any money. We're just gonna we're just gonna fix it and give it to him. So I think this is gonna be pretty fun. It'll be fun to dig into. Um, I have a few ideas of what's going on with it because the previous owner he uh, he had pretty good descriptions of, of what was going on. He said uh, he thinks it needs a new fuel petcock because it floods the engine uh, when you try to crank it. It's vacuum operated petcock. So there's no on and off valve. Um, so here's a vacuum line and here is a fuel supply line, both of which look pretty rough. Um, so in anticipation of that, I went ahead and got a replacement fuel petcock and uh, one thing I haven't addressed yet that I know is a problem are the 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 keys. There are no keys for it, and there are no lock cylinders. Uh, what you would typically stick your key in to unlock the seat to get to the battery to get to the fuel tank, oil tank. It's a two-stroke, and it's oil injected. Uh, we're not going to assume that works. We're going to premix our fuel for testing purposes, uh, and we'll we'll find out if that works or not. And then over here, you'll see that it has the lock cylinder in it still, but you know, whoever lost the key and just punched it out. So with a screwdriver, that is um, manageable. We'll see if we can, we can work that out for them though and make it nice. You can see the seat is pretty nasty. We're starting to get some mold. It's been ripped open for a while. It's been wet and dried and wet and dried. So, won this one on eBay auction. Pretty sweet deal. Ah, looks fantastic. So we'll slap that bad boy on there. Boom, first project done. This one's kind of cool. It's got the uh, dealership logo on it still. Honda of Hopkinsville, that's Hopkinsville, Kentucky. I probably drove two hours to get this and it's kind of cool show you the dash there um, it's a little tall for me I can't see the mileage I think it's 3,000 or under we'll uh, we'll treat the plastics we'll try to bring the color back in them we'll just try to bring this thing back so hang out with us while we attempt to get this thing going for my good friend. So, I've already got some parts here. Let's, uh, let's get into it. <clears throat> um, 
what I have here is um, reed and gasket set. New set of reeds, and they are carbon fiber reeds. Uh, I've got a piston kit and a new cylinder from Niche Industries. You know, it's a cost effective kit. I've run them on um, LT80s in the past, they do just fine. And of course, gasket kit for that. I did get a new spark plug and fuel pet cock, like I said. I got an air filter for it. And I'm gonna have trouble finding these things because it's it's been sitting here for a minute. Oh yeah, tires. I got tires for it. There's my air filter. No, that's a tube. Here's my air filter. And spark plug. Tubes, tires. We can't have him uh we can't have them riding around Hodgenville on uh, 30 year old tires straight from Honda. So <laughs> we're gonna get them hooked up with some nice tires. So another item I got for it was a battery. We'll uh, plug it up and see what kind of electronics we got. Hey, we got power. Starter works. That's good. All right, cool. Um, there's not a whole lot of hardware on here. You could tell someone had taken it apart and not had the uh, had taken the care to replace or retain the hardware for it so that's unfortunate I think what we'll do first is uh, confirm that we have spark Put my key up, didn't I? Yes. Let's check for spark, shall we? I see spark. Good enough for me. So, previous owner, not lying about spark.
All right. After many, many tries, uh, trying to get this thing to fire over, I've decided that uh, we'll go ahead with the new top end, the new cylinder, piston, and rings. Um, I know before we got a compression reading of 90, which is bottom of spec. You want like 90 to like 115, I think. But after all the the attempts at starting, I did another compression check and it was down to 60. So we're gonna go ahead with the top end. head here so you know looks okay got some carbon buildup but uh, I'll tell you what we'll do with that yeah buddy put you in there Let that do its thing. Get a look at this cylinder wall and the piston. We'll get to see what it looks like. See what story it tells. Take a look at the rings. Alright. Uh, it's got some scoring I can feel with my fingernail for sure it's not the ugliest thing I've ever seen uh, the bottom ring is free the top ring is frozen Quite a bit of play in the wrist pin. I don't think that I like that. But anyway, I got a new piston. Nothing like alarming about the piston skirts or the cylinder wall. But we've got new stuff, so that's what we'll do. And I do believe that top piston ring being frozen is uh, it's what's causing our problem. I didn't see much of a base gasket on there. I guess it all came off on the cylinder. zero up and down play so that's good and we have a little bit of side to side play on your rod which is okay but you don't want any up and down play and we don't have any otherwise that thing looks great all right so 
you just saw me attempting to do a top end on this this here spree and uh that was four months ago and i've since rebuilt the top end again and um oh, sorry spider no one's crawling on me why is it crawling on me wife's hanging out there's a spider it was on me it was on her <laughs> anyway um i gave up and so i got on ebay i found this the only uh supposedly good spree engine it was like 200 dollars. forget it i've been sitting on this thing forever so uh there it is it's installed i had to swap over a few components like flywheel um carburetor uh reeds and um i've also taken all the body work off i have cleaned up the frame cleaned up all the components uh the wire harness was is kind of a mess so i cleaned it and had to do some repairs to it so now uh, i think we might be in a spot where we can test my work so nothing is mounted attached properly so this is going to be a little sketchy. But you know, it's for testing purposes. Really hoping this thing runs because I want to be done with it. pops over and runs it has no muffler on it right now uh, i've got that in the sandblasting cabinet it needs to be cleaned up and painted all right see what we got You heard it it's gonna run it's gonna live pretty excited about that um, we're going to condition the plastics get them put back on make sure all the electronics work signals and all that um, like I said I've got the uh, got the exhaust in the sandblast cabinet we're gonna get that cleaned up but we're in good shape so uh stay tuned because uh, i'm going to show you the finished product when it's done and maybe if uh if the recipient is filling up to it we'll do a uh a reveal video where uh where we deliver it to him so uh we'll catch you next time guys mm -hmm.